afternoon everybody and welcome to Live at Lunch. My name is Catherine Murray and I'll be your host for today's session on the 2015 Remedy. And our session today is focused on those members who will be moving to Alpha on the 1st of April 2022 as part of the Remedy programme. I'm joined today by colleagues from Cabinet Office and my CSP, and we're here to provide you with some information to help you understand what's happening with the Remedy programme and how you will personally be impacted. We're going to start with a short video uh, and an introduction from my colleague Stella Humphreys from Cabinet Office, and then we'll move on to look at a presentation on the benefits of Alpha um, with Emily Wilson from the My CSP training team. After we've looked at both of those, we'll move into our question and answer sessions. So we know there's a lot of you that would like to have a lot of your questions answered, and you should be able to see on the screen how you can ask those questions and pose them to the panel. We'll aim to answer as many of your questions as we possibly can today, so do please make use of the upvote function. We can vote for the questions that you'd most like to see us answer today, and we'll get through as many of those for you as we can. Today's session will be recorded, so you will be able to refer back to it in the future if you want to watch through it again and maybe take some time to digest some of the information that we're going to share with you. If you encounter any technical problems, you can pose those as questions as well, and our team behind the scenes will try and get to those and try and help you to access the session in real time. But like I say, it is being recorded if you do have any technical problems, you will have the opportunity to watch it again in the future. Following today's session, we'll send you an evaluation survey. Do please take the time to give us some feedback. Let us know how you found the session um, and whether there are any changes that you think we can incorporate when we're running these events for you in the future. And as well as that, we'll also be running some live polls during the session. So we're going to start with the first one of those now, just to get some feedback from you live. And our first question is about the support that's being provided for you with the 2015 remedy. So it's important that you feel supported. Is there anything else that you would like to have seen from us so far or anything you'd perhaps like to see in the future? So please take some time to just fill in that question that should appear on your screen just now um, and let us know how you feel about the support that's available. So let me take the opportunity now to please introduce uh, Stella Humphreys, who's going to give you a bit of scene setting into today's session. And then we'll move on to our move across to Alpha video for you. Over to you, Stella. Thank you, Catherine. Um, thank you all for joining us today. Um, you should have all received a letter from ourselves discussing the move to Alpha pension scheme and what support and guidance is available to you. It's really important that you have the necessary information to feel supported, which is why we've set up um, these three live at lunch sessions. So today we're providing you with an overview of moving into Alpha, the value of Alpha. And as um, Catherine said, we'll give you the opportunity to ask some questions at the end. Um, we appreciate pensions, first of all, can be very confusing. And first of all, I want to reassure you that we will be guiding you every step of the way throughout the process. So as you know, from the 1st of April 2022, everyone will be contributing to a civil service pension um, pension um, scheme, and that will be Alpha. This will officially mark the end of the discrimination identified in the 2018 court judgment, which is known as the McLeod case, and the introduction of a single civil service pension scheme for all active members. So you can find out all you need to know about Alpha via the links in the letter that uh, you've received or by going to the remedy section on the civil service pension website and hopefully the link should um, appear in the uh, chat box below. So these pages as well as the website have been recently uh, refreshed and um, are a lot more user friendly. Um, we also have a regular remedy newsletter which will keep you updated. Um, going forward and again hopefully the link should uh, appear for you if you've not that yet found that on the website and um, the great um, there's a great um, element also on there so you can provide us with any feedback going forward so without uh, further ado um, we're going to now look at the uh, moving to alpha video thank you Welcome to the 2015 Remedy. This video is being created to keep you updated, informed and supported as you move to Alpha 
on the 1st of April 2022. For more information on the 2015 remedy, a series of videos can be found on the 2015 remedy section of the Civil Service Pension website. We can see on the timeline that the next milestone is on the 1st of April 2022. If you are a member who is currently still in Classic, Classic Plus, Premium or Nuvos, you will be moved to the Alpha Scheme automatically on the 1st of April 2022. You do not need to do anything and be reassured that any benefits that you have built up in your legacy schemes are safe. The Alpha Scheme pays you a pension based on a proportion of your pensionable earnings. It is a valuable benefit and can deliver a higher benefit than final salary schemes. As well as providing you with a pension, the Alpha Scheme also provides a number of benefits such as the opportunity to exchange some of your pension for a tax-free lump sum, ill health benefits should you become too ill to work, a lump sum if you die in service, pay to whoever you have nominated, a pension for your spouse, civil partner or nominated partner in the event of death in service. Any dependent children can also receive a pension in the event of death in service. More information on the Alpha Scheme can be found at www.civilservicepensionscheme.org.uk forward slash members forward slash alpha hyphen scheme hyphen guide. The 2015 Remedy Programme is there to make sure that you have the support, tools, information and guidance. We will guide you every step of the way through the process, making sure you know exactly what is happening. To keep up to date, the 2015 Remedy section on the Civil Service Pensions website is where you will find all the latest news, information and FAQs www.civilservicepensionscheme.org.uk forward slash members forward slash 2015 hyphen remedy hyphen McLeod. Thanks for that, Stella. Uh, I hope everyone found that video informative. So the next thing we're going to do is just ask for a little bit more feedback and input from you scheme members as well. So we've got a couple more questions to ask you now. So the first one is how would you prefer to receive communications from us? Would you prefer them to be physical, such as items sent to you through the post? Or would you prefer them to be digital emails, things posted on the website and videos? So if we can just get your feedback on that and we'll use that to shape future communications. And our second question is about your understanding of the remedy program. So what is your understanding of the remedy? Would you rate that as one strong, two slight or three non-existent? And we'll use that as well to shape future communications that are coming out to you. Hopefully sessions such as today should get rid of anyone in that non-existent panel, but let's see how we get on. So the next stage of today's session is I'm going to move across to my colleague, Emily Wilson, who's going to deliver you a short presentation all about the Alpha Pension Scheme and its benefits. Over to you, Emily. Thank you, Catherine. Hi, everyone. Good afternoon, everyone. So my name's Emily. Uh, I work for the training team at my CSP, and I'm just here to talk to you a little bit about the Alpha benefits and how they actually accrue. So we should have a presentation showing on the screen at the moment. There we go. Um, okay, so what we're going to talk about is the benefits of being in the Alpha Scheme kind of in general. So why contribute in the first place? And then the contributions themselves. So how much do you pay your employer as well? Um, alpha accrual, of course. So how does your annual pension figure build up in the Alpha Scheme? And how that correlates to the contributions that are paid in as well? Uh, retirement options, of course, that's the big one on everyone's mind. When can I retire? How do I do that? Um, but also some comparison to some previous schemes as well, just so that you can see how they all compare overall. 
considering that everyone's moving over to alpha. So what's actually happening? So in a nutshell, all members of the civil service pension schemes who continue in service from the 1st of April this year will do so as members of alpha. So they'll be accruing an alpha pension from that point onwards. The previous schemes, so Classic, Classic Bus, Premium and Nuvos, they'll actually be closed in relation to service after the 31st of March 2002. So it will be a single scheme for active members from the 1st of April this year onwards. Benefits of the Alpha scheme. So Alpha is what's called a defined benefit scheme. And this means that your benefits have a set calculation to them. Uh, so it's nothing to do with investments. It's a set calculation. So it's quite easy to predict and kind of work with when planning for retirement. It's what's called a career average pension scheme. And that means that your benefits accrue as a percentage of your pensionable earnings every scheme year. Your employer contributes, that is a contribution percentage of at least 26.6%. It's all to do with the salary that you receive, and we'll look at that in more detail in a second. You also get other benefits with Alpha, such as death benefits, so death in service, which is a lump sum payment that you nominate someone to receive, but also dependent pensions, which is a completely separate thing, and that's ongoing monthly payments for someone when you pass away. Ill health provision is a good one to mention here. So this is where if your health deteriorates to the point where your earnings are affected, you might be able to get your pension paid early um, without reductions, maybe even with enhancements, but it all depends on just how severe your case is. And that would all have to be assessed at the time, of course. And what you get ultimately is a pension that builds up as a percentage of your earnings each year, which it can normally be paid from the normal pension age for alpha, which is your state pension age. So it's a lot more than just a pension that comes with it. There are other benefits of being in the scheme um, as we've just touched on. So just make sure that you're making the most of the other elements to it as well. So to be in the scheme and have access to them benefits, you need to pay contributions and you pay a percentage of your salary, which is determined by the salary that you're on. So you should be able to see that here, which sort of salary banding you fall into. These are the current contribution rates for all of our schemes at the moment. And the contribution amount that you pay in is not what directly builds up the annual pension figure that you'll see on things like your benefit statements each year. Uh, the figure on your benefit statement has got a set calculation to it, which we'll cover in a second. And that's then paid to you for life in retirement. So the annual pension amount you build up is paid to you every single year, literally until you pass away. And that's basically where these contributions all come into it. They fund them ongoing retirement payouts to you. Uh, and that's also where the employer contributions come into it. So employer contributions for Alpha Scheme are you know, really generous. They range from 26.6% going up to 30.3%. Again, salary related. So all of these contributions are what funds your ongoing retirement payouts until you pass away. So how does your alpha pension actually build up? Uh, there's three main elements to that. So first thing is pensionable earnings. We look at what your pensionable earnings are each scheme year. The scheme year runs from the 1st of April to the 31st of March. So we look at what your actual pensionable earnings were during that scheme year, and then we calculate that by the accrual rate. The accrual rate for Alpha is 2.32%. So it literally means your pension is building up at a rate of 2.32% of your pensionable earnings every scheme year. Every year, though, before we come to add in what you've accrued for that scheme year, the first thing we do is look at the amount of annual pension you've already accrued in Alpha, and we then adjust that with Treasury orders. So HM Treasury orders. So first move every year is look at what you've already accrued and then adjust it with them Treasury orders, which could be a plus or minus. Uh, for the most part, that has been a plus since the launch of Alpha in 2015. When we explain the accrual for career average schemes, I think it's always better explaining it using this visual format. This tends to really help people in terms of understanding how the benefits build up. So let's say you're in the alpha scheme and you've just completed your first scheme year. 
We look at what your pensionable earnings were during that 12 months. We calculate 2.32% of that figure and we put that aside for your annual pension. So that's represented here by the orange block in column one. The following year, the first thing we do is revisit that annual pension that you've just accrued. So that's represented by the purple in column two. We then adjust that with the inflation. That's represented by the pink in column two. And then same move as before, we look at what your earnings were for that scheme year. Again, calculate the 2.32% of that to add on. And you can see this process just repeats every year. And whatever this figure is at the end is the annual pension that you've built up in the alpha scheme for the normal pension age for alpha, state pension age. Remember, you don't have to wait until state pension age to claim that. Early retirement is an option and it would come with some reductions on the figures because it's then in payment to you for longer. So with some figures, it always helps to see these sort of examples. So in this alpha members first scheme year, they had pensionable earnings of £30,000. If we calculate 2.32% of that, that means they've accrued an annual pension of £696 after one year's service. The following year, the very first thing we do is revisit that £696 that they've accrued and adjust it with the HM Treasury orders. So in this example, we've got that as 3%. And then part two of year two is the same move as before. We look at what their earnings were for that scheme year. So 32,000 in this example. Again, calculate the 2.32% of that and add it all together. So what we're adding here is the pension accrued the first year, inflation on that, and then the pension accrued the second year. So after just two years, this alpha member has accrued an annual pension of £1,459. Let's have a look at a longer term example. Again, it always helps to see just kind of as much detail as possible with these examples. So this is an alpha member who has pensionable earnings of £30,000. So let's say they had 30 years of membership in the alpha scheme. Just for ease of this example, we're going to assume that they stayed on the same pensionable earnings for that 30 years. So £30,000 pensionable earnings times 2.32% accrual rate means they're accruing an annual pension of £696 every year. So if we time that by the 30 years, they've got an annual pension of £20,880. Again, just remember that's based on no change in that pay. So presumably over a 30 year period, you would have even just inflationary increases to your salary. And so in theory, we would hope for that to come out at even more. But just for ease of the calculation, we've kept it as that. OK, so alpha retirement. Um, as we know, the normal pension age for alpha is state pension age. You can take a lump sum from it. So the benefits that have just gone through there are as standard. You get standard annual pension. You can take a lump sum from that. You would just then have to start giving up some of that annual pension for it. So the conversion rate for that is one to 12. And that means for every one pound of annual pension that you give up, you'll get 12 pound tax free lump sum. There are limits though to how much lump sum you're allowed to take and that's across the board in defined benefit schemes. So you can only actually take up to a maximum of 25% of your overall pot value as a lump sum. You can manually work that out. So it's called the maximum lump sum and to manually work it out, we take the annual pension that you've built up, times it by 30 and then divide it by seven. So the figure that you'd be left with there is your tax-free maximum lump sum in alpha. We then divide that lump sum figure by 12 uh, to see how much we then need to reduce the annual pension by as a result, because it's the one to 12 conversion rate, remember. Now you could obviously you know, sit down and do this manually using these calculations, but we've got a calculator on the scheme website that does all of this for you. So the Civil Service Pension Scheme website, it's called the Retirement Modeler, and if you actually log into our pension portal first, which is the online login facility, then that modeler will be pre-populated with all of your personal figures from your last benefit statement. So why not just use that? It's really easy to use. Uh, maybe make a note to take that away as an action point. 
So retirement and alpha, like we said, normal pension age is state pension age, but it doesn't mean that you have to wait until that age to claim it. Early retirement is an option from a minimum age of 55. Um, some reductions would be applied to the figures if taken early because it's then in payment to you for longer. It's still paid for the rest of your life, remember. Um, again, the retirement modeler on our website will give you them estimates for early retirement. So make sure you're utilizing that. Each year that your pension is in payment, then it will just continue to be adjusted with inflation in retirement. And it's based on a type of in inflation called CPI, so Consumer Price Index. It will be useful to see sort of how the alpha scheme accrues in relation to the previous scheme. So we've just got here some examples of our previous schemes accrual rate. With our earlier schemes, which is classic and premium, they're final salary schemes. And so they're normally looked at as a fraction. So classic is an 80th, premium is a 60th. And it can be really difficult sometimes to compare fractions to percentages when we're looking at our final salary schemes and our career average schemes. So we've done a bit of conversion for you here. So the classic accrual rate of 180, if we look at that as a percentage, then the classic pension accrues at 1.25% of your pensionable earnings each year. We've done the same thing with premium. So premium's accrual rate of 160 converts to 1.66% of your pensionable earnings. Nuvos is 2.3%. And then alpha is 2.32% as we've just looked at. So alpha has actually got the highest accrual rate of all of our schemes. And um, I think a lot of people maybe aren't aware of that, but you accrue pension at a much quicker rate in alpha than the other schemes. It has the later normal pension age as well, remember, of state pension age. Um, so it's got that higher accrual rate as a way to kind of balance that out overall in comparison to the other schemes. So the schemes do have differences in different areas, but Alpha has got the highest accrual rate of all of them. So we've mentioned their final salary, career average. What's the difference between them? What does that mean? So final salary is our earlier schemes, classic and premium. And that basically is where it's kind of one big calculation at the end based on your length of service and your final pay. So it's your best 12 month salary in your last three or 13 years, depending on the scheme that you're in. So what that means is if you've had um, maybe a higher pay figure that doesn't fall within one of them last three or last 13 years, then it wouldn't be used as part of your pensionable pay. So that's one of the points of the final salary schemes. With career average schemes, which is new boss and alpha, your pension builds up as a percentage of your actual pensionable earnings every single year. So even if you had a year, you know, in the early on in your career average scheme, which was higher, you're still going to get some sort of pension accrual from that. And um, so career average just kind of across the board tends to provide a bit of a fairer pension scheme and a more sustainable pension scheme as well. Uh, which brings me to the last point, really. So why? Why this change? Why was the move to Alpha introduced? It was all sort of based on a report that was published by Lord Hutton in 2010, and it basically assessed the sustainability of public sector pension schemes for the future. So in that, he said that it's possible to have good quality and sustainable defined benefit pension schemes, which balance the legitimate concerns of taxpayers about the cost of pension commitments in the public sector, as well as ensuring decent levels of retirement income for those who have devoted their work and lives to the service of the public. So it's not about giving us less pension, it's about creating a more sustainable pension scheme, which is fairer across the board and kind of guarantees more um, security for the future. So hopefully that gives you all a good overview of the Alpha scheme compared to the previous schemes. Um, and that's it for me from me for now. So passing back over, thank you. Thanks for that, Emily. That was really interesting. Um, I hope everyone else thought so as well. Um, so before we start our question and answer session, um, we're just going to have a look at the polling questions that we've already asked of you 
uh, from the session today and see what your responses were. So the first question we asked you um, was how you, would you prefer to receive communications from us? And the results of that were pretty even. So we've got 49% would prefer physical communications and 50% would prefer digital. So pretty even Stevens on that one. Second question we asked was, what is your understanding of the remedy? With 9% of you saying that your understanding was strong, 63% saying your understanding was slight, and 28% non-existent. Hopefully, attendance at events such as this should move more people from that non-existent session uh, answer into one of the others. That's certainly what we're hoping for going forward. So we're going to move now on to our question and answer. So do keep your questions coming in. We will try and get through as many of them as we can over the next half an hour or so. So for the first question, I'm going to come to you, Stella. Um, so can you describe the situation for people who will be retiring within 12 months of being moved across to join Alpha? Thanks, Catherine. Um, so first of all, to point out the deferred choice underpin will not be available before October 2023. So members who have retired before this deferred choice underpin, which we abbreviate to DCU, um, is implemented, implemented and have a period of, remedy, of relevant service between the 1st of April 2015 and the 31st of March 2022 will be offered a choice once these um, legislative changes have been made. So the choice will be retrospective and backdated to the point um, of that payment um, of pension benefits began. So it's expected that um, you, you should see this on your annual benefit statements and you should see um, both scenarios on your statements for the remedy period, um, hopefully around um, the end of August 2024. And you'll be provided with a choice on um, these options as well. Um, so if I signpost you as well to the remedy section on the website, there's a lot of FAQs, especially for those that are imminently retiring and, and are concerned. So there's a lot of information there, but also to point out that you still have control of when you retire. So uh, back to you, Catherine. That's great. Thanks, Stella. OK, question two, I'm going to come to Ian. So this is a question from a member who's currently partially retired from the classic scheme and they'll be moving to Alpha on the 1st of April 2022. What does this mean for this individual when they retire in the future? Will they receive two further monthly pension payments, one from classic and one from Alpha and two separate lump sums on retirement? Over to you, Ian. Thank you, Catherine. So it's probably worth talking about what would happen normally and then what will happen in terms of the remedy. So if if the remedy wasn't happening and people were just moving to Alpha as normal, all that will happen is you'll carry on getting your classic pension you're already receiving. If you if you were building up more classic pension, when you take that, you'll get a further payment. And then when you take your Alpha at a later date, you will get those Alpha pension payments and an Alpha lump sum as well. Now, the interaction with the remedy is we will look back to the period 2015 to 2022, and then we will say, OK, you you know you had this classic pension you built up the service in classic from 2015 to 2022 would you like to keep what you built up or would you like to change that to alpha and then there'll be a production saying this is what you would get in alpha this is what you're getting classic at the moment um so there's two elements to that Okay, hey, thanks Ian. Um, just a little bit of a follow-up question from that. I'm going to come to Emily. So someone else who's also partially retired has said, is there a way to decide whether I will be better or worse off as a result of moving to Alpha in April 2022? Thanks Catherine. Um, so in terms of just kind of a nutshell response first of all, in terms of whether or not you'd be worse off, that's kind of a difficult one to answer with just with one point. That could differ from member to member. Some people may be better off in the newer scheme. Some people, when we're talking about the seven year remedy period, uh, might prefer to put that back into the old scheme. The point is that from April of this year, you will be accruing an alpha pension from that point onwards. Remember that alpha pension accrues at a much quicker rate than all of the previous schemes. So in terms of the amount of annual pension that you accrue, you'll be accruing a much higher rate of annual pension than you would have in any of the previous schemes. But it's then got the later normal pension age um, of state pension age to sort of balance that. 
But then early retirement is an option, as we've said. So really what it all comes down to is um, what your preference is. And that's where Stella mentioned earlier, we will at some point have a tool available for you to see what that's going to be as well. Um, and it will counteract, you know, any reductions, any projections as well. So um, it just it's going to differ from person to person. Thanks, Emily. That's great. OK, um, so my next question, I'm going to come back to Ian again. Um, so how will the change to Alpha affect the pension that I've already accrued? Thanks, Catherine. So it, it doesn't. So from from a member's point of view, if you've built up Classic, you're being moved to Alpha on 1st April 2022. That Classic pension just sits there. So it's not removed it's not changed at all you know there will be a choice later on with the remedy as i mentioned in the previous question but for the moment that just stays as is and you start building up your alpha pension and um, we had a similar question as well I'll just pick that up as part of this as well so somebody had asked they were planning to retire in october 22 with 44 years of classic service and how will that interact as they're being moved to alpha from first of april so from this person's point of view, you would have your classic pension built up for around 43 and a half years. And so your classic pension will be calculated on that. And then you'll have six months or so of alpha pension service. So there's no loss of pension time built up. It's just the final six months are based on alpha. So there are different rules and how that's calculated when you can take it and so forth. But it's not, nothing's removed as it is. Uh, thank you. Great, thanks for that, Ian. Um, my next question, I'll come back to Emily again. So question from a member in the premium scheme. I understand that in the premium scheme, upon retirement, the calculation figure is based upon the best index linked salary of the previous 13 years. Will this still be the case as the scheme ends on the 31st of March? Will it be 30, 13 years up to the 31st of March 2022? Thanks, Catherine. Um, in short, no, it's it's not going to be ending on the 31st of March. So there's something called the final salary link. And this is where if you move from a final salary scheme over to Alpha, um, then the, the final salary element of your final salary scheme is still actually taken from your last day of service, whenever down the line that might be. So it's still your best 12 months of your last 13 years, but from the date that you actually retire, even though you're now in the Alpha scheme. And that's what we call the final salary link. So it means that if you get a pay rise, for example, you should see that also increase in your previous final salary scheme, even if you're no longer in it. So it's something to keep in mind there. Thanks, Em. OK, so um, I'll come back to Ian again for our next question. So we have a member who partially retired in May 2015 and has continued to work part time to date. Is that counted as continuous membership for the remedy scheme? Thanks, Catherine. So I'm presuming that this member has service from 2012, given they partially retired in May 2015. So if that's the case, so if you do count as part of the remedy group, and you retired in May 2015, then any service you built up are after that until 31st of March 2022 will be considered for the remedy period. So you'll, you'll get your choice along with everybody else based on the service you accrued for those seven years or six years and 10 months. Thank you. OK, thank you. Um, so I'll come to Stella for our next question. Um, so we've got a member asking, am I better off taking some of my pension before I retire or leave it until I retire completely? Where can I get some financial advice regarding this, Stella? Oh, thanks. Um, thanks, Catherine. Um, so first of all, we're there to, as, as mentioned before, we're there to support and guide you every step of the way. Um, at the moment on the website, we've got am I, an am I affected tool which um, at the moment will tell members if they're affected by the remedy. As we move on later on in the year, such as when we get to April, um, this will be updated and will provide a calculator for members that um, they'll be able to understand a little bit more about the financial impact. Um, as we then move on to spring next year, it will be um, a fully functioning modeler where you'll be able to put in your details and actually see and make that decision as to whether you feel it's it's kind of better off um, taking one or the other. Um, so 
we're working quite hard behind the scenes on all this um, support guidance and tools. Um, so please don't feel that, that you're on your own to make this, uh, this important choice. We will be there guiding you. Thanks, Catherine. Thanks, Stella. Ian, did you just want to add something there or? Yeah, thanks. Um, th thank you, Catherine. Yes, I think Stella summed up very well. But just as a reminder, while we don't give out financial advice to individual members, uh, everybody's circumstances are different. We don't know what you as an individual member have going on. We can talk about your pension, but we don't know what other things you may have, other income strands. You know, there's, there's a variety of things, which is why there are independent financial advisors out there. We can't recommend any because we don't have any direct links with them. But this is why we don't come and say, yes, you should retire because you're financially better off, because genuinely we don't know, because we don't know all the other interactions you have with any savings, any benefits and so forth. So that's why we're always a bit cautious when we answer questions like this. Thank you, Catherine. Thanks for that, Ian. That's great. Um, OK, next question for Emily. Can you take partial retirement? Receive your full premium pension whilst not claiming your deferred classic pension and lump sum until full retirement. So, must be a member who's perhaps had a couple of periods of service asking that question, Emily. Thank you, Catherine. Um, yes, is the short answer to that. So, when you partially retire, you don't have to claim any previous preserved pension that you've got sat there. Um, even if you were a dual member, so even if you had continuous service in two different schemes and you partially retire, you don't have to claim both of the schemes that you've accrued benefits in. So for that question, yes, you could partially retire with your premium and keep your classic one preserved um, until you'd like to claim it. And that includes the lump sum element as well of the classic. Thank you. Thanks, Emily. OK, I'll come back to Ian again for our next question. So what impact does the introduction of Alpha have on WPS refunds for people who are unmarried at time of retirement? Thanks, Catherine. So just for the benefit of everyone on the call, so WPS uh, refunds are widow's pension scheme refunds. So these are when the scheme was originally set up in many, many decades ago. Um, there was a creation of a widow's pension scheme as well. The idea being that not everybody would have a widow. This was before the days you really had widowers in the same way. So not everyone would have a widow. So some people who left service and were unmarried would get a refund of their one and a half percent contributions. Um, with the move to Alpha, um, everybody, because it, Alpha was introduced a lot more recently, we tidied up a lot of these points. So there are no, there's not a WPS element of the contributions you pay into Alpha. So there will still be a possibility of when you leave to get your refund of WPS contributions from the time you were in classic but anything you built up in alpha just counts towards the service so there's no distinction of a widow's pension scheme that for people building up in alpha they're just there are death benefits available for widows widowers and others and then that that's regardless of whether you're unmarried and things like that so um i hope that answers that thank you Okay, our next question, Ian, I'm going to come back to you again. Um, lots of questions for you. Um, are there any circumstances where someone would not move to the new scheme? I've been told that I have full protection from the alpha, which means that under the current legislation, you will not move into this scheme and stay in classic. Thank you. So there are no circumstances where people will not be moved if they're still in classic to alpha from 1st of April 2022. Originally, when the 2015 reforms happened, a number of members, including yourselves, were left in Classic and other parts of the PCSPS. Um, this was found by the courts to be discriminatory. So as part of the 2015 reforms, which we're talking about today, all members were required to be moved into the reform schemes for which Alpha is R1 by 1st of April 2022. And there's currently a bill going through Parliament, uh, which will do this. So while the existing legislation says you won't be moved, the legislation that will be coming in very shortly does move everybody who's still in PCSPS. Thanks for that, Ian. Um, I'm going to continue to pick on you, unfortunately, and ask you another question, if that's okay. Um, we've got a question from a member who has 44 years in the classic scheme and could retire at the 7th of August, which was their start date. Do I bank my classic service at the end of March and start a new in alpha or um, zero or allow the whole lot to transfer into alpha? And is that a choice that's available to me? 
Thanks, Catherine. So I think sometimes when we talk about moving people or transferring people into alpha, we may give the wrong impression. These are, these are pension terms which make perfect sense to us. I think to everyone else, they are, can be a bit confusing. So if it's helpful, let's think about classic and alpha in terms of pots of money. It doesn't quite work that way, but I think for, for this example, it works a bit better. You've, you've built up your 44 years in classic. That now sits there and you start building up a pot in alpha. So that classic pot remains untouched until you make a decision on it to usually take it either partial retirement or fully retirement. So you, you will start building up pension in alpha. The, the classic pension you've already built up won't move into alpha. So you've still got those 44 years and you'll start building up something in alpha. So there's not, there's not a choice because there doesn't need to be a choice because your classic is safe. The only time that classic would change is when you come to make your remedy decision at retirement, presuming you retire after October 2023, you'll be given the choice of whether you want that 2015 to 2022 period in classic or, or, or alpha. So you might pick alpha because it's it's better for you. I don't know. Uh, or you might stay with classic. So from your point of view, you, you don't need to do anything and you don't need to make a decision at the moment. Great. Thank thanks you. for that, Ian. Okay, I'm going to come to Stella next. So a question from a member is, do I have to join Alpha from April 2022 or can I choose to opt out of the pension scheme altogether? Thanks, Catherine. Um, so as it's been mentioned, um, you'll be moving, everyone will be moving to Alpha scheme um, on the 1st of April 2022. Um, no, you don't have to stay in um, the Alpha Pension Scheme. Um, there is um, on the website details if you wish to opt out. Obviously, it's something probably um, looking at um, Emily's fantastic presentation, it's something that we wouldn't advocate because, you know, I'm in the Alpha Pension Scheme and there are a lot of um, benefits to being in that civil service pension scheme. But certainly, no, you don't have to, uh, to stay in that pension scheme. And again, if you wanted to go on the civil service website and uh, type in that information, all the information's there to, uh, to inform you. Thanks, Thanks, Catherine. Thanks, Stella, that's great. Yeah, so anyone can choose to opt out of the scheme at any time if they wish to, but obviously as well as losing that accrual of pension benefits, you're also losing that death in service lump sum, the link to ill health retirement benefits aren't the same. So you need to really think about the big picture when you make an important decision such as that but it's always an option that's available if that's preferred. Our next question, I'll come to Ian again. So alpha pensionable earnings, if you are part-time or partially retired, are your earnings your actual pay or your full-time equivalent pay like it is in the final salary schemes? Thanks, Catherine. So for alpha, we've, it is your actual pay. This presumes that all your pay, including any allowances are pensionable so for most people pensionable earnings will be whatever they're being paid there's a few people for whom they have an allowance or something that isn't pensionable um, but for most people they would just build up their alpha pension on whatever they're earning in in practice because it's like, because it is a career average scheme we don't need to necessarily go back and do complicated calculations we just say what have you earned this year is here's your pension type of thing so thanks Catherine Okay. Thanks, Ian. Yeah, so worth bearing in mind, yeah, there's always things on top of your basic salary that have the potential to be pensionable as well. And if they happen when you're in a career average scheme, then they'll count towards your pension whenever they take place. Whereas in a final salary scheme, they'd only be picked up if they happened within your last three or 13 years of service, depending which of the schemes you're a member of. Um, next question. Um, Ian, I'll come to you. So I'm over 60. I'm on Classic Plus, but may decide to leave before state pension age. Will the pension I have accrued until April 2022 be subject to an actuarial reduction? Thank you. So I'll answer this a bit more broadly. Um, so in Alpha, as was mentioned in the presentation earlier, the pension is linked to state pension age. So if you take your Alpha portion of your pension before state pension age, there will be a reduction unless you are buying EPA, which is a very small group of members, so we won't go into that. Now, in some of the older schemes like Classic, Classic Plus and so forth, they have lower normal retirement ages. So if you take your pension on or after the normal retirement age of these schemes, 
um, you, there are no, there's no actual reduction. So even if it's below state pension age, if you can take, for example, your pension from 60 in one of the schemes, there's no reduction to it, even if your state pension age is 66. If the state pension age really only kicks in with Alpha and to a certain extent, Nuvos. Thanks, Catherine. Thanks, Ian. That's great. Um, I'm going to come to Stella for our next question. So I currently pay added voluntary contributions into the classic scheme. What happens to these after I move across and join Alpha? Thanks, Catherine. Um, I think uh, just recently we've updated the um, FAQs on the, the website for this one. Um, so when you roll back into your legacy scheme, there will be an exercise um, that allows you to change any added pension contracts <clears throat> that you've taken out between the 1st of April 2015 and the 11th of March 2022, whilst in the Alpha scheme into the legacy scheme, ad legacy scheme added pension instead. Um, so this would mean that the Alpha added pension applied for prior to the 1st of April 2022 could be changed into um, legacy scheme added pension. Um, that's roughly what we've uh, put on the website at the moment, and I, and I can kind of remember that. Ian, is there anything that you'd like to add to that? Uh, no, just that we are still working through the various bits around added pension, additional voluntary contributions and uh, effective pension age. So there will be a communication later to members, but there's nothing members need to do at the moment around this. Thanks both. That's great. Um, we've got two questions here. Um, I'm going to roll into one and ask these to you, Ian. So one member has asked, will I be disadvantaged if I retire in October 2022 and the remedy scheme doesn't kick in until 2023? And then we've had another question. How can you plan your retirement if you want to retire before October 2023 as the deferred choice underpin will not be available before then? So over to you, Ian. Thanks, Catherine. So this is a regular question we get some some variant of where, you know, we're, we're saying to everyone, oh, this will be ready from October 23. And then it's, well, I want to go before then. What happens? And am I disadvantaged? Now, the reason we are waiting till October 23 is there's a lot of work to do behind the scenes, both on the policy and also building member calculators and illustrators so we can actually do all of these calculations for you. Now, I think some of you are probably sitting there thinking, well, oh, hang on, this is easy. You, I know what's in my current scheme and you've told me I'm going to get a, ch a chance to have alpha as well. So just calculate it under alpha. But there are plenty of members for whom that's a bit more complicated because members may have bought added pension. They may have partially retired. They may have received an exit or efficiency payment. There's so many variables in there, which is why this takes a long time to do. Nobody will be disadvantaged they retire earlier. So if you retire earlier than October 2023, all that will happen is once the deferred choice underpin is up and running and you're already retired or partially retired, you'll get something in the post called a remedial saving statement that will set out your choices. So and this is for anybody who's retired, um, beneficiaries of somebody who's died, you know, those sort of, sort of groups. Um, in terms of planning for your retirement, because we're still building those capabilities, we can't tell you exactly what you'll get. But ahead of the October 2023 deadline, there will be some tools available which give you a better idea of what a pen your pension under an alternative scheme could look like. Um, but when those precisely will, will come and we're still working out. Thanks, Catherine. Thanks, Ian. Yep, there's an awful lot of work going on in the background at the moment to try and get everything in order in preparation for all of these changes that are being implemented. So as soon as we can, obviously everything will be shared with you just as soon as possible. I'll come back to Ian again for our next question. So someone said, can I check my understanding? The pension rate is dependent on and calculated based on your salary and not your pension contribution. I think the scheme I'm on allows me to increase my pension contribution. Is that the same for Alpha? And if so, what impact does that have? Thanks, Catherine. I'll also pick up another question we've just had in, which is I've got 43 and a half years of service in Classic. Is there any advantage in buying additional years in Alpha while I'm still working for another few years? So the way um, added pension works in Alpha is very similar to how Alpha works overall. So in Alpha, just a reminder, you build up a pension based on your average salary each year. 
Um, the way Ad Pension Alpha works is you build up more of your average salary pension per year. So you might choose to buy an extra £100 of pension a month, and then that just gets added to your overall Alpha pension. Uh, the calculations are slightly different for compared to classic, classic plus and so forth because of the way the schemes are configured. But ultimately, the, there is the same principle that you are buying. You either pick an amount and pay that monthly and you get a certain amount of pension at the end of that, or you, you choose an additional amount of pension to buy and then you're told how much that will cost each month. Um, added pension is a very good deal. Um, we can't recommend it because, again, we don't know your circumstances, but it certainly is a good way that many people use to top up their pension. So um, with the person who asked about, should I buy some added pension? It, it is up to you and your own financial circumstances, but it does does work out pretty well for the average member. Um, thanks, Catherine. Thanks, Ian. That's great. Um, I'm going to pick up the answer to the next question myself. So um, someone's asked for death in service. Do I need to fill out a new nomination form for Alpha? Or does the nomination for the classic scheme automatically transfer over? So the nomination that you have in place would transfer over from classic to alpha. You don't have to make a new nomination, um, but it is worth bearing in mind that in the classic scheme, you only have the option to have one person as your nomination for death and service benefits. In alpha, like all of our other civil service pension schemes, um, you can nominate multiple people, which is an option that wasn't there in classic before. So it might just be something that you'd like to consider in terms of whether whether you'd like to perhaps split your death and service nomination between multiple people um, rather than have everything to be paid to one person. So you can make a change to your nomination at any time. If your circumstances change, do make sure you keep your death benefit nomination up to date. The easiest way to make your nomination is on the pension portal, if you've registered for the pension portal. Um, or alternatively, there is a form available on the Civil Service Pension Scheme website that can be completed, that you can uh, fill that in, send that into my CSP um, and have your new nomination in place. Um, so I'm going to pose our next question to Ian. So the question is, if I leave or retire within two years of joining Alpha, is it true that I will not have accrued any benefit and just get my contributions back? It's a really good question because there's lots of pension myths and rumours out there at the moment, I think, especially with the introduction um, of uh, Alpha and the 2015 remedy. So it's good to try and put some of those myths to rest. So over to you, Ian. Thanks, Catherine. So this comes about because members who have just joined the civil service have to spend two years in the civil service, with some exceptions, in order to build up a pension. And if they leave within two years, they get the contributions refund. For probably everybody on this call, that's not relevant, because what we do is take into account your existing service in uh, Classic, Classic Plus, Premium and so forth. So from our point of view, even if you just spent a month in Alpha and then retired, you'd get a month's worth of Alpha pension. Wouldn't be very much, but you'd get it. So there's no there's no contribution refunds if you leave within two years for anybody who has service in PCSPS. And then I also, as I'm on, Catherine, I'll pick up question 24. Uh, so this is, I'm about to buy EPA. So this is effective pension age where you reduce uh, the age which you can take your alpha pension from uh, to reduce my NPA, my normal pension age, by two years. If I retire early, will this be taken into account when reducing the pension for early retirement? So yes, yeah, this is the purpose of effective pension age. So unlike added pension, where you build up extra pension, EPA allows you to take part of that alpha pension earlier. So it's not necessarily better than alpha added pension. It is just different because it focuses on reducing that age. So if you are taking your alpha pension early and you have bought EPA, that will be taken into account with the final calculation. Thanks, Catherine. Thanks, Ian. That's great. Um, so I'm going to come back to you again, Ian, for another question. Um, so just going to... Um, there, is there a penalty on alpha if you retire before your scheme's normal pension age? So, yes, I mean, we don't call it a pension. We use the wonderfully clear term of actuarial reduction. Um, but because, as Emily mentioned earlier, because Alpha has a higher accrual rate, so you build up more pension on average. 
but the flip side of this is the it's designed for you to take it later so if you do take it before your state pension age then yes there is a reduction applied to reflect the fact you're taking it earlier than planned it's the same as if there would be a reduction if you took your classic earlier than planned uh, but just as important to remind people if you do have classic or similar service you can take that from a lower pension age so that is not actually reduced if you take that from below your state pension age and then uh, just a follow-up question as well uh, can you take your tax-free lump sum on alpha at 55 uh, if you have a right to in most cases yes so if you have a right to take your pension from 55 you will but again it will be severely reduced because of the age gap so for most people their state pension age at the moment is about 66 67 so if you're taking something 11 12 years earlier then there would be a significant reduction so again that's not to say don't do it but it's just to take that into account and there will be some people who won't be able to take their alpha pension until 60 it will be quite member dependent so I, I without knowing the full circumstances I would just check that with my CSP whoever asked the question to ensure you you know what your rights are and then finally, I might as well uh, uh, carry on chattering so you've got a bit more of me. If I take out partial retirement, would the McLeod outcome decision be affected? So again, this goes back to when you uh, take that decision. So if you take partial retirement before the deferred choice underpin comes in in October 23, you'd have to wait uh, until after that to get your choice. Uh, and if you've the uh, same as if you've already taken partial retirement, so you'll have to wait to a period after that. If you take partial retirement, after October 2023, that is when you'll get your choice. So if, for example, you decided to partially retire in January 2024, uh, you'll get your partial retirement choice of either Alpha or PCSPS with Classic, Classic Plus and so forth. Thanks, Catherine. Thanks, Ian. Thanks so much. That's great. Um, that's pretty much all we've got time for in today's session. Um, so thank you very much, everyone, for attending today. I hope you found that useful and hopefully we've been able to answer some of your questions. If you haven't had your question answered today, we are running another one of these sessions on the 23rd of March. So the option is available for you to attend again if you would like to. Something else you might like to also consider. So we run sessions called Pension Power, which run every weekday, um, where we do sort of a general overview of the civil service pension scheme, which includes the 2015 Remedy and Alpha. So there should be a link appearing on the screen there. If you'd like to book onto one of those, you can attend one of those when it's convenient for you and have some of your questions answered by one of our pension professionals there as well. Um, today's session is going to be recorded, as we've mentioned, so you'll be able to watch it back in the future if you would like to. Um, and this afternoon, we'll be sending out an evaluation survey to see how you found it today. Um, so do please give some time to give us some feedback and we'll use that to shape any future events. So thank you very much. Um, hope it's been useful. Have a great rest of the day and we'll look forward to seeing you on one of our events in the future. Take care, everyone. Bye from us.